Legal analyst Stephen Clark joining us. And Belwani was found guilty on all 12 counts of defrauding both investors and patients. The verdict, though, mixed for Holmes. She was not convicted on the patient charge. So what's your reaction to today's verdict? Well, certainly the Balwani team is not very happy with this result, particularly when you look at Elizabeth Holmes's case, and she was portrayed as the mastermind of Theranos, and yet she was only found guilty of four counts. But Mr. Balwani, who said, I was just following orders, an investor, got convicted of all charges. This was a very bad outcome for the Balwani team. And I think when you look at both of these cases, uh, it's clear that the the common denominator was that Balwani did not testify and Miss Holmes did. And I think Miss Holmes did herself a lot of um, goodwill by testifying to that jury because she was found not guilty on many charges that Mr. Balwani is now facing. And during Elizabeth Holmes' trial, she accused Belwani of physical and emotional abuse and painting him as the mastermind of all of this, as you had just mentioned. Belwani denied those charges, tried to shift that blame to Holmes. So how do you think her trial coming first impacted Belwani's outcome? Well, certainly for the prosecution, it was a dress rehearsal for the Balwani case. They looked at what went right and wrong in Elizabeth Holmes's case. They were able to fine tune their case and they really put on the same witnesses and evidence against Mr. Balwani. And so it for the prosecution, I think it was gave them a chance to clean up the case and it was a much better outcome. But what I think happened is that when Miss Holmes took the stand and accused Mr. Balwani of domestic abuse and physical abuse, um, that certainly could have tainted the future jurors. And I think that'll be an avenue for uh, potential appeal was he um, already coming into court uh, being portrayed as both a fraudster and a domestic abuser, something that the defense is going to look at. But I think for the, de the defense of Balwani, they're going to say these verdicts are inconsistent. How could Mr. Balwani, who's been convicted of conspiracy um, and be, co be convicted of that, at the same time, Ms. Holmes was found not guilty of some of those conspiracy counts when it's the two of them that are getting together to conspire. That doesn't seem to be a consistent verdict. And these cases would have been tried together had not Miss Holmes accused Mr. Balwani of domestic abuse. The, the judge felt that they had to separate the, the cases. And I think that worked tremendously to his disadvantage. You could have seen a very different outcome if these cases were tried together, perhaps not with this inconsistent outcome where Holmes was convicted of four charges, Balwani's convicted of 12, and yet she's the face of Theranos. Mm. And, and Holmes has already filed an appeal. Can we expect Balwani to do so? And this will likely lengthen the process. So give us an idea of how this could play out and what sentencing might actually look like. Well, sure. I think both sides now are going to look, look at what happened in Mr. Balwani's trial and include that in their review for an appeal. Ms. Holmes is already pursuing an appeal, and Mr. Balwani, I think, will look very carefully at these inconsistencies in the two verdicts. Why did Ms. Holmes get such a different outcome with the exact same evidence and witnesses? I think that's um, something that their team is gonna say, it's just not factually consistent. So I think that will be one avenue of appeal. And also both sides will have to now get ready for a sentencing hearing. Um, both are still facing significant time in jail. And I think the big factor in what kind of time they're looking at is going to be the how much will the loss was in this case. We're almost You're talking millions and millions of dollars in restitution and losses. That's the key factor, I think, for the court in handing out a very stiff sentence to both of these individuals. And I'm curious, does, does this verdict send a message about the fake it until you make it culture of Silicon Valley. So what kind of impact could this have on startups making bold claims that aren't proven about their technology? Well, I think you'll see a much more circumspect Silicon Valley moving forward. Um, this case did send the message that we're not going to micromanage Silicon Valley, but when you do things that cross the line from uh, good intentions to fraud, you will be prosecuted. So I think a lot of people are taking notice of this verdict. I mean, obviously, Miss Holmes was this iconic figure here in Silicon Valley, uh, potentially the next Steve Jobs, and that completely fell apart. And I think people are going to be more careful about investing in Silicon Valley 
it, without knowing all of the, the details. And I think that was the message that if you commit fraud here, we are going to go after you. That was what the government wanted to say. And I think a lot of these startups are going to be careful about you know, making representations that are not supported by the evidence or the facts of what's going on with their company. There's a difference between hype and fraud and where you draw that line is really the key here. And I think that's what the government is saying. This went way beyond just um, feeling good about your company. And this went well into the fraud area. And I think that was the message being sent to everyone here that if you do that, you're going to get prosecuted and you could face significant time in prison. All right. Well, thank you very much for your insight, Stephen Clark, joining us. Uh, thank you, for, as always. Thank you.